Princess Diana was a, a real icon, a worldwide icon of the 1980s and 1990s. So her visits to Suffolk and Essex were very exciting occasions. Uh, the public absolutely loved her. And uh, we as a newspaper uh, were very excited along with, uh, with our readers when she came here. Uh, probably the most memorable of her visits uh, to this part of the world, for me anyway, was in 1986. Uh, when she came to the Suffolk show and I do think that uh, still that uh, that year's attendance at the show uh, was a record and that shows uh, just what an attraction uh, she was for, for the general public. Her achievements? Certainly incalculable. She was a catalyst for the reform of the monarchy uh, which no longer sets itself so far above us. Uh, I can't imagine back in 1997 that anyone could have envisaged our Queen taking part in the opening ce ceremony celebrations for the 2012 Olympics in London. The day of uh, Princess Diana's death uh, is one of those uh, times when you will always remember where you were. Um, I was uh, fast asleep at five o'clock when uh, someone called me to say uh, what had happened. Uh, and uh, three hours later, uh, we were publishing the very first Sunday edition of the East Anglian Daily Times, followed by the Evening Star and the Eastern Daily Press, uh, which were, our, as I said, our, were our very first uh, Sunday publications in our company's history. Uh, and it just felt to me that, that we uh, had a responsibility to tell our readers what had happened, in, in our own way in, in a regional context and uh, that set um, that set up a, a very challenging week actually when uh, you know there was a lot of self-examination by uh, journalists about what had happened and because of the circumstances of Princess Diana's death so I, in my 20 plus years as editor of the East Anglia and I, I do remember that as probably the most challenging of, of all the weeks. Um, my main involvement was uh, on the day after her, her death when I was one of a small team who was called in to produce what turned out to be the first and last real editions of the uh, East Anglian and Evening Star as it then was on a Sunday uh, to cover her death. One of, uh, one of the calls I had to make was to the Lord Lieutenant of Suffolk Lord Belstead um, at the time who was fast asleep and I had to ring him at seven o'clock in the morning uh, and tell him the news and to get his reaction. It was one of the strangest conversations I think I've ever had um, waking up the Lord Lieutenant with that kind of news. Um, it was uh, a very strange and solemn time um, and for the whole of the week after that uh, it felt as if the whole world was gripped by the story, going right through to the uh, funeral. It was a tumultuous week, um, and it certainly seemed to take a long time to, uh, for any kind of normality to reassert itself. Even after the funeral, it was still the only thing people were concerned about, were talking about for months afterwards, for the rest of the year, I would have thought. Uh, so 20 years on, we mourn the passing of a princess who made a real difference. And we also mourn her passing at a time perhaps when she might just have been on the cusp of real happiness. Today, we have instant access to news via many media and we also have the power to comment. I wonder what Facebook might have looked like on that day in 1997. What people might have said then.